popping the cocktails with Tiana J from Turquoise by Mother Janice and Sister Janice. Um, and we're only eight days into 2022 and a lot has happened within like a week. So we have a lot to discuss. Um, first, I want to say, um, give my condolences to Sydney Portier's um, family. The actor passed away Friday at the age of 94. Um, he lived a, a long, great life. Um, Legend. Yeah. P pioneer. He first black man to, uh, or black person in general to win an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. And he paved the way so many for so many black artists in entertainment. So rest in peace to Sydney Fortier. You were a legend. You will be missed. And you used to love, or you probably still do his movie of Raising in the Sun. Oh, I, I love still it. watch it. Uh, uh, let's do it again. Was yes, one of my all favorite them. Movies. I still yeah. watch oh. them. I love those movies. Mm -hmm. so, uh, what was you, it? The other Sydney. one he was in, uh, Lily's in the uh, Uptown Saturday Night. Night. Uptown, Uptown Saturday Night. I love that one too. Lily's uh, in the field. Lily, yeah. Lily's oh, in the field. that's my favorite. Uh, yeah, I love Lily's in the field. Yeah, that's when they sung Amen. I love that. <laughs> Good guy. Thank you. Um, so today our topics are a 28 year old New York man um, passed away from hopping over a turnstile. He ended up breaking his neck. Um, let's see here. Jim Jones go into discussion with the ladies of lip service about his mom teaching him how to tongue kiss, which put the internet in a frenzy. We're going to talk about the podcast, Fresh and Fit, their distasteful comments about black women. Jason Derulo goes off for being called Usher and Antonio uh, Brown quits the um, Buccaneers. So a lot to discuss. So first, um, I want to talk about the 28-year-old who died in New York. Go ahead and go to that picture of the gentleman, please. So he was 28 years old, and what, they're, what the reports are saying now is he was drunk and tried to hop over the turnstile to avoid paying the fare, end up um, like flipping over and breaking his neck. Um, he had a four-year-old son. He has um, a four-year-old son. Yeah, so he's like, that's that's awful. And you see all the time, especially like even on movies, people hop in the turnstile and things like that and never think that it would end in such a tragedy. That's because it's a simple gesture. But mm -hmm. for people like me who are very, very clumsy, like this story gave me anxiety. That's like a big fear of mine for me to slip and like break my neck because I know how clumsy I am that I don't have good balance and I don't I'm not good with gathering myself like a cat would like yeah. I feel like I feel like I would seriously hurt myself and just the thought to, that that happened to somebody for real mm -hmm. like gives me anxiety this story gives me anxiety like just to think you tried to hop over something and fell back and hit your neck in an angle that killed you yeah, that's, that's scary sad. as hell it's sad. that's very sad but that's scary as hell yeah, and uh, like honestly, I don't think the fare is much. I think it's probably like two dollars or three dollars. Yeah, I would it's very it's, she, it's less make, than five. Yeah, yeah, it's less than five dollars. I would yeah. just just That's pay sad. the the fare. Yeah, it, it's not worth it. It's really not. And then especially when you're inebriated, mm -hmm. when you're drunk, like don't don't do no crazy stuff. Like it's. The things that people do, it's just weird to me. It's weird to me that stuff like this could happen and it could have easily been avoided mm -hmm. if he had just paid the fare and walked through. And, you know, he was, uh, reports are saying he was such a good father and now his four-year-old son has He was to... probably a great person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what's really sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was honestly a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Something that he thought was going to be harmless. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Just hopping over something. It's like mm -hmm. hopping over a fence. Even if there was no fare involved, mm -hmm. just hopping over something. Like me being the klutz. I think like that when I think it's, like, when, when my nephews are changing light bulbs or my son are changing light bulbs or my mom, I'm like... I have anxiety, like I'm scared. Like if you slip, I don't know what could happen, and I right. hope I could catch you. Stuff like that gives right. me anxiety. Like when mom changed the light bulb, it was all it was me, you, and Eli. Well, we like, all was like, no. Nah! <laughs> yeah. They don't know. I'm gonna be holding on to life. I ain't gonna move. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. So my condolences to, and I believe That's his, sad. Uh, his name is Chris Christopher De La Cruz. Oh. So rest in peace, and my condol our condolences rest to Rest in his peace. Family. That is yeah. so sad. Yeah. Um, so moving along, uh, so Jim Jones was on, 
the podcast lip service is um, ran by Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. And so they asked him about like dating and everything. And he was saying how his mom taught him how to uh, tongue kiss. Let's just, let's just take a look at this. What did your mom tell you about sex when you were she young? She told me everything about sex. Like she what? My, my first condoms, shit like that. My mom told me how to kiss when I was younger. What did she tell you to do? <laughs> she told me how to tongue kiss when I was younger. Like, like what's the instructions? It wasn't no instructions. She showed me with her mouth. Like she. She kissed you? It's my mother. No, I'm just asking. Okay. Oh, I love her. My parents never. My parents kissed me. Barely kissed me on the cheek. No, so my mom I just stopped she kissing showed my son me how to, She showed me her tongue kiss when I was younger. Remember, my mom's was seventeen. She's a baby. Look at all the babies that's yeah. having babies now, sure. and, act, and look how they act with their babies. It's like Be they like, have a little sister or a little brother yeah, you more than they had. Did you think? Child. Did you think tongue kissing was nasty at first? Because I, the first time somebody tried to tongue kiss me, I thought it was so disgusting. Um, the first time I tongue kissed a girl, yeah. <laughs> So, of course, the internet was like, oh, my God, Mama Jones is so nasty. She was ki fridge kissing her son, and that's why she didn't like Chrissy, who's Jim Jones's potential wife, girlfriend. Long time. Uh, yeah. She's his common law wife, <laughs> wife practically. Um, but they're, they're not legally married. Um, and so, of course, like, when, I was, when I was seen, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's... it just came off very disgusting. Yeah. But his mom did give her response. So let's go ahead and play Mama Jones's uh, response to Jim Jones. I'm doing fine, except for the little excitement that's going on with my son. Man, have you seen the comments? The comments is crazy, and everybody needs to understand you're taking it wrong. I am not a nasty mother. All I am is a mother that t was teaching my son exactly how to survive and how to actually be able to deal with a woman. And for the information, it wasn't no tonguing down. It was mm -hmm. a way of showing you how to tongue. He he licked out his tongue. I licked out my tongue. That was that. It wasn't no mouth to mouth resuscitation or whether there's anything. It wasn't like that. It's all about where's my son growing up, and me as a young a young mother, showing her son how to do and deal with life with the young girls because he's a nice handsome looking guy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, and I taught him all about sex. No, and trust me, everybody, it wasn't about no sex. Okay, just showing him, telling him how and what he got to do, you know, about how to. All right. So that, so I understand what she's saying. Like she was mm -hmm. a single mom. She was just trying to show him how you interact with the lady, how to treat a lady. If this happens, how to handle it. I don't see anything wrong with that. A lot of people do that. It's seen in, it's seen in movies, TV shows, the sex talk. You know, I don't, I think it's just the way Jim Jones said it interpreted yeah like and he didn't try to clarify it either yeah. until after his mom released a statement he was like gone with it like when angela Yee was like so your mom kissed you he's like that's my mother instead of saying not mouth to mouth your thoughts on snap mom especially like being a single parent raising i didn't show him how to do nothing <laughs> with no one but i didn't i didn't show him anything but i understand what she's saying you know but people so quick to judge. They jump right into that his mom was tongue kissing him. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's crazy. That, I, even I look like, I was like, ooh. Yeah, but that's gross. crazy to just jump right into that. Even though what he said. It, it's but made it sound know like he, he was tongue kissing But y'all know he. He from New York. He <laughs> yeah, talked a little different. Yeah. He so talked a little different. I would have never thought that they were tongue kissing each other. Yeah, he, he, I would have never took he, it that he, way. I mean, once uh, Mama Jones clarified, mm -hmm. I understood. Then I look back at what Jones says. Like when he said, that's my mama. Like, how dare you say I'm tongue kissing mm -hmm. my mama? Mm -hmm. I think he meant it that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, even as weird as it sounds, I think. If she doesn't teach him who is, and if she doesn't teach him, he out here doing you know horrible things, and he being irresponsible with, sexually, then you're gonna blame her for not teaching mm -hmm. him. So she's doing right by trying to teach him how to interact with women, and if she's just showing her him, excuse me, with her mouth and not actually interacting with him that way, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because she was trying to be a parent and let her son know what it is because it's life you know that they're, they're gonna learn this thing one way or another and you're gonna either be there that guide them in the right direction or you're not
Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, so moving along, there's this podcast called Fresh and Fit, which I never heard of until the other day. Um, so it's I don't know the other gentleman's well, the other guy's name. But Myron Gaines, he say says a lot of disrespectful comments about black women, African American women, and he had Asian Doll was on their podcast. There was a um, disagreement between the two. He asked her to leave. This um, encounter made, of course, anything you put out on the internet never goes away. So people was pulling up an old podcast of Myron Gaines saying. A lot of rude comments to a caller well, about black women to a caller who called in about a, a black women a black woman dating site um and he made these comments so let's go ahead and do the fresh and fit video <laughs> oh I, it's funny i never used that one bro but oh, hey man, man. I mean, hey, bro, if you want to date a bunch of Shaniquas, go for it, man. LaQuisha. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, uh, me and Fresh aren't really down with the brown nah, like that. Man. We ain't night Riders. Nah, so bro, I'm good. Uh, you know, sometimes if they're, you know, red bone, but like in general, me and Fresh uh, don't dabble in the dark, if you know what I'm saying. Yep. Uh, okay. So last one, guys. Uh... <laughs> all right. So, of course, as you all saw calling us night Riders. He doesn't dabble in the dark. First off, he's not even cute. I wouldn't date him, and I'm a dark-skinned lady. Like, bruh, I wouldn't dabble in whatever you got going on. And secondly, the it's just the whole, the way he is tearing down black women. You don't want to date black women. That's okay to have a preference, but you yeah. don't have to talk down to us and degrade us. All you have to say was, uh, you know, that's not my preference, or I never used that dating site. Um, but it's a good look for them, for the sisters to get out and start dating. Like, whatever. You don't have to be so rude and disrespectful. And I don't know what you wanted to say for... Like, Most you, likely, yeah. people that judge a whole race of people by their color, black women probably wouldn't date him. That's what made him... Night crawlers? What? Night what does, writers. Oh, Okay, night riders. Yeah, what they're... does that mean? Because we're black. Mm -hmm. He black yeah, too. We're dark. But some of them is darker than that one guy sitting on the other side. He was darker than anybody. He, they shouldn't say anything about people and their color. I don't judge people by their color. I judge them by their reactions or what their they do to me. You know. But it's just sad. Crazy. It's sad that how all black men talking about black women. It doesn't bother me, and I'm a black woman, because I wouldn't date their ass no way. That's all I got to say. But to constantly put us down is kind of getting really stupid. Kind of... Okay, well, yeah. uh, back uh, mm -hmm. picking off of that, which you're absolutely right, that I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with not wanting to date black women. It's yeah. okay to have a preference. If you don't like black women, okay, fine, it's cool. What I don't understand is the vitriol towards black women like calling saying night writers and then i even when i was discussing this in different groups um in social media a lot of them were saying how oh no night writers is what they say to white women that date black women that they're they're night writers because they date black men so they were basically putting that on black women too like do you not realize that black men are basically using the same tropes that white supremacists use towards black community, the black community in general. Like when they say, oh, this, he's a thug or he's a criminal or he's a this and that, you're doing the same thing by calling us Bonquisha, Shaniquas mm -hmm. and Ratchet and Ghetto and all this other stuff. Because there was another video of him, uh, there was a black girl who was a dark skinned black girl who was on his podcast who, uh, was very nice, very timid, very, you know, quiet. And they're like, oh, I don't like black women because I think most black women are ratchet and ghetto and da 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 But you, you're okay. And she's all, aw, like taking it as a compliment. Like as if, oh, I'm different from the other black girls. That, the fact that y'all don't see the racism y'all doing and let their preferences, because they don't prefer black women, let their preferences say, oh, I don't like the didn't do nothings. I don't like the thugs. I don't like the hoodie wearers. I don't like the criminals. Or y'all y'all leave a bunch of kids everywhere. Y'all a bunch of baby daddies that don't take care of y'all kids. So I don't date y'all for them reasons. I don't want to date a Daquans or a Deshaun's. If those 
women of their preferences were saying that they would be crying racism. Mm-hmm. They would be crying racism. Like, so why do you? Yes, it's like so. Y'all wanna go against right, this? right. Yeah, y'all, y'all going against them. That's racist. It's mm-hmm. racist for y'all to not like black men. And this is, they would not uh, appreciate if their preference has said that they don't prefer, prefer them. And I and I have no problem with people not wanting. In fact, matter of fact, with that mentality, y'all doing us a favor by not wanting to associate with us. You're doing us a fucking favor. But I just think it's ironic that black dudes that say this stuff and that agree with this stuff don't realize how much they sound like white supremacists. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't really when think about it. When white people or people of non-black uh, descent, Asians, whoever, when they say those things about black men, you feel offended. But when, uh, but you want to say to black women, oh, it's my experience. What if their experience is only dealing with thugs and yeah. criminals and stuff like that? You wouldn't want to be stereotyped because not everybody is the same. We are all individuals. They're not. I don't know two people that are exactly the same. And they probably don't care. They feel like once they in, in good with the Caucasian community, they feel like they didn't leveled up and they don't no longer have to deal with stereotypes. Well, that's not that's true. a lie, though. Yeah, it's a complete that was, that lie. They calling true. us oh, so whatever. So y'all y'all talking don't about us. Fact, even though we're part of the same community, mm-hmm. y'all are the ratchets in the ghetto. We're they, okay. He is too because he was talking ratchet and mm-hmm. ghetto by the way he was talking to black mm-hmm. by, about black women. So they're right. no better than us. And I just watched the. Um, movie even though it's old movie the movie the brothers last weekend mm. and it reminded me of how things are going on so still it's like it it it, it always exists it's just out there more because of social media mm-hmm. but like bill bellamy's character he did not want to date black women mm. and i think from the movie standpoint is it stemmed from his mom his, the rest of what his mom like she wouldn't hug him she wouldn't tell him that he uh, that she loved him mm-hmm. and so he only was dating like uh mixed women or white white women and then it was a scene when the white lady he was dating got into it with his ex and he, <laughs> she was more ghetto yeah, than and he, and she, and he was like you all are just the same she said you think because i'm i'm white um that we that i wouldn't uh, get tired of you uh one thing black women have in common with uh, white women is that we're tired of you no good man and going off yeah. and she's like come on I'll kick your ass yeah, that was yeah. Like, that yes. was and so it, and that's how it is nowadays still too they mm-hmm. have this they they think that it's going to be different a but it's not. It's the same. Because if not. you ain't mm-hmm. shit, a white, a black, a Mexican, yeah. they still gonna know you ain't yeah. shit. Women's I, instinct is universal, all uh-huh. racial lines. And that's where watching, I was like, wow, like this is still what's going on now. I'm watching it back then. It really didn't mm-hmm. resonate with me because, of course, like I was a kid. There's yeah. a lot of things but that I watched recently that I'm like, oh wow, you're surprised about, yeah, yeah, like wow. Okay, because I didn't realize how that would still be relevant today. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, there's a lot of crazy. stuff that I've seen recently that makes me think, like, of what that scene from uh-huh. the brothers. Because that's a very good point in regards to this situation. Mm-hmm. And even um, Joe Budden mm-hmm. responded to the situation. And he made a very good point. A lot of people was trying to call him contradictory because he doesn't technically date African-American women. He dates black women of latin descent Mm -hmm. but he he made a very good point and he defended black women because from the podcast and the main point that i got from him that i wish most black women would take heed from is what he said to these guys if y'all think that black women are a bunch of bone quiches and laquishas which we love by the way Mm -hmm. he said if y'all think they are this and this and that y'all think they are so bad don't take their money don't invite them on your panel don't have discussions about them don't associate with them at all matter Mm -hmm. of fact just cut them completely out of your life that's i agree with totally and i want to hold black women accountable in this situation is we support these men we're the reason why these people are popular we're the reason why they're able to go on social media and get a huge following Mm -hmm. because we will right we're we're too damn white people ain't watching but well they they have women of all different races on their panel but not the ones that be talking about black people like that well no they're always talking about black people and it seems like they talk about black women in particular a lot Mm -hmm. unnecessarily and then you'll have black women that come on these panels that want just the validation want so bad for for these people in this manosphere to like them that they will basically sit there and get degraded 
and thinking, oh, no, they don't mean me. They mean everybody else that looks like me. Hmm. And that's so sad. We have got to stop supporting people that degrade us. We have got to stop supporting Hmm. people that hate us. When people show you who they are, believe them. Do not give them a platform. Do not give them. We obviously have a lot of power. I wish that black women would realize the power that we have because we clearly have a lot of power. The fact that men that don't even prefer prefer us would need us in order to capitalize off social media Mm -hmm. by talking about us or even having us on their panels because Asian Doll, the situation with Asian Doll, why was she on that panel? You don't even like black women. You think we're ratchet and ghetto. Why are there any black women on that panel? We're a bunch of, we're we're night riders. We're, uh, you don't, we're not down with the brown. Why are there any brown women on your panel? I, so I'm holding black women accountable in this situation. Stop supporting these motherfuckers. Stop giving them a platform to capitalize off of degrading you. Stop it. And I'm going to say, you know, from personal experience. I do. I do. From <laughs> personal experience. Yeah. And um, that also brings us to, which I didn't, li- we didn't list as a topic, but it ties into everything. Like Serena Williams. Yes. Was that um, Kevin Samuels? No, that- it was a Kevin Samuels follower. Okay. Mm. He made a post. Uh, go ahead. He made a post, basically, uh, there's some Kevin Samuels follower made a post saying that Serena Williams picked a a white guy. If it was a black guy that was exactly like that white guy, she wouldn't have picked him. Goes in this long rant basically talking about how she was used and abused by the elite black men in the industry, none of whom married her, by the way. This dude she's with now is somebody that loved her, wanted to marry her, that's who she's with. Mm -hmm. I don't think that she she's never talked down on black men she's never talked down on anybody but for him to go into this long rant about her for no reason reason, Mm -hmm. and saying that she did something wrong by her finding somebody that loves her who happened to be a white man but then we have such people like fresh and fit that openly degrade black women can openly admit and then they'll say things like oh it's okay for women to prefer somebody that's short or, or tall or somebody they don't like short dudes or they don't like broke men that cannot be compared to a skin color mm-hmm. you can change your financial situation you can't change your height but somebody can still fall in love with you like i could prefer a tall man but i could very well fall in love with a short man i'm mm-hmm. not discriminating short men and then Serena, uh, Serena Williams have been dogged. Like a lot of people in the African American call her community, masculine, yeah, call, her call her gorilla, a, like all kinds of all kinds of things. So they were just course, jealous of her, though. And then now you're yeah, mad I mean, that she found. I don't but think of call somebody out their name or dislike somebody you don't know. No, is yeah. she jealous? Made this whole scenario in his head. Hasn't you're met jealous. this woman. Don't know her personally. He he made this her. whole scenario <laughs> jealous, in his head. Because why would That's you crazy even be talking about her? Me. She don't even know you. Same she, thing about Gabrielle Sidibe. Look how bad they tormented her after she did the movie yeah. Precious. Like she got teased and she tormented to, and to she's engaged to a white man, and people are ragging on her. That that man loved her. That man and wanted to be with her and people are ragging on her for that. I'm like, how are y'all mad that, that somebody you didn't want happiness. found somebody that wanted mm-hmm. them? That makes no sense to me. Yeah. They're jealous. And then if y'all don't want us, what's wrong with With somebody is like, oh, not only do I not want you, I don't want nobody else to want yeah. you either. That's that is weird. some narcissistic people, bullshit. That social media got people acting a damn fool. Because that's, that's, that's crazy as fuck to me. And mm-hmm. I'll never forget the time that I had a white woman call me a bed wench. For defending Serena Williams. Really? Yes. I had gotten to it with this hotep ass dude. This hotep black dude. Mm. Who had ideologies like we've seen before. He believes that uh, you are what your father is. So black men can have children with any race of women. And they're black. Yeah. he, He has that mentality. And he had a white wife. And he was calling Serena William a, a bed witch and said, you, you have a white wife. How is she different from what you're doing? And then he goes into the spill about, you know, uh, the, you are what your father is and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you don't think that's hypocritical to call her a bed witch? And his wife gets in in the argument. She's white. She calls oh, me a bed witch. Wife. But you yes. know what? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. They say anything they want to on social media to you, but... I can guarantee you they wouldn't come like up in fight. here. Right. right yeah. Come up in here. He Horrible. wouldn't have called you nothing and neither would she. But the irony, though, the mm-hmm. irony of, uh, of the wife of a black man, a white wife of a black man calling me a bedwench. 
She the bad witch. Bed he wind. probably only with her because she probably got money. That that was like the last time. Like this is just getting out of hand. It ties him like with to that whoa Vicky girl calling herself a black Barbie and calling herself black. It's like that. It's every like black living in the twilight zone. Every black man needs his black queen. Yeah, she's call, yeah clearly call, not white. Black. She's clearly mm. a white woman, but she's calling herself black. Mm. It's like I'm living in the twilight zone. I have a white woman calling me a bed wench because I defended a black woman that has a white. A, a white husband when she's a whole ass white woman married to a black man. I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. We've been living in twilight zone for <laughs> like the past few years. What's who who even is the creator of twilight zone? Ross Sterling. Ross Sterling. Ross Sterling. It's been a hot mess for it's the past been a hot few ass years. Mess. It has. It's yeah, like, he knew it was coming. The, way it's the here. Twilight Zone, the Outer Limits, yeah. Tales from the Dark Side, all in one. <laughs> yeah, and Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. It's all of it. It was all the shows I watched. They controlling this. Um, and okay, so I know we talked about Megan Good and Devon Franklin a few times, but you want to touch on their their new year's <laughs> pictures mm-hmm. so he posted a picture of himself crying <laughs> and she posted a picture of her looking fabulous and ready to start a new chapter she wasn't she just looked it beautiful she wasn't like, like glowing she just looked it very flowery and pretty yes, but that was him crying Aww. And her oh um, she looked pretty yeah and what's crazy is he's oh, he's crying but he the one who filed for divorce he said he's in peace and pain for the new year <laughs> Peace and pain. But I don't understand what would make him divorce her. It's well, she, clearly a private She thing. has never, though, been a bad girl. No, well, she's always been anything yeah, she seems bad. Like a sweet I person. never saw yeah. her name in. So that's crazy to me. I think sometimes people just aren't compatible. They probably didn't have any issues. They just probably weren't meshing. Mm -hmm. It could have been something simple. We don't know the story behind it, but I think it's funny how people are trying to shame Meg and like make it seem like she something was wrong with her. She couldn't be a pastor's wife when really it's just sometimes things don't work out with people mm-hmm. and that's why I don't like when people generalize and say oh you should have chose better or you should have picked the right this and like you can me and you could be the most most amazing people it seemed like both of them seem to be decent people just because they're decent and good people doesn't mean they're good for each other yeah you know th- they just didn't work out and he it's know, sad and he remind me of the brother from empire they look just alike <laughs> they look like brothers yeah. they look just alike i heard they were good friends they, they are, are. <laughs> you know but um and then another relationship okay so chloe and tristan Tom- thompson so it was confirmed by dna test that he did father the baby i think her name is like Marley or marley nichols and of course everybody <laughs> like some people feel bad for Chloe some, some people don't some people are bringing back the situation that happened with um Jordan Woods and basically Tristan is for everybody and Chloe a lot of your guys you got you stole from other uh women yep so that's karma yep I don't Definitely. have anything else to say about it because it's just it's a ridiculous situation yeah he always disappoints <laughs> but in the, on the other end, it's kind of like what she gets. Because, like, even Lamar Odom mentioned how he was dating Taraji P. Henson and left her for Chloe. What? Mm-hmm. French Montana <laughs> left Trina for Chloe? Yep. So it's kind of like, what? baby girl, that's what you get. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't like to give none of the Kardashians any, like, the... Uh, I don't like giving them any like airtime or anything, but the truth of the matter is, is like somebody had posted that with Chloe, every dude she's been with like publicly in the public eye was with somebody else, usually a black woman, and she would get with them like still steal them. You can't really steal a man like he'll leave or whatever, so that's not technically her fault. But she didn't care that they were committed to other. He was with somebody else when she got with them. She, she didn't mm-hmm. care. And the way it comes off is is that she felt like she was better than these women and that he would be different with her. And then when she gets the same exact dude that they got, all of a sudden she's shocked and don't understand and wants to blame the women that he's cheating with. No, sister, you got you. Was, you got exactly is. what you deserve because mm. that's how you how you got them is how you lose them. 
That's how you got them, and that's how you're going to lose them. And you can stick around and keep being with them as long as you want to. You the damn fool. The woman that got away are the lucky ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did Terrence Howard say on Best Men? Karma baby. It's karma that's baby. The it is. Is, that's yeah. the way it is. And it goes back, like what we were saying earlier, just because she's, you know, not of this skin tone. She right. She, she felt like she better. would be treated differently because she wasn't. If men and she's a cheat, Kardashian. men and cheat. She's they a Kardashian. cheat on you if you're Mexican, black, white, yeah. purple. It don't matter. Orange, it doesn't matter. They get the same and men. I, and I hate to say, I think a lot, except for probably Kanye, but I think a lot of the guys that, that are with the Kardashians do it to gain fame. And, yes. Because, not saying that they're bad people, but that they're trying to take advantage. Uh, yeah. What is it called? Uh, you hear that a lot with like the housewives women. Anytime they go on the dating scene and they don't even make as much money as the Kardashians. Uh, opportunists. Yes. They're that's opportunists. Like, that's just what it is. Okay, so moving along. Ooh, um, I hate to give that airtime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Jason Derulo. <laughs> oh my God. He it's not the full clip, but over the weekend he got into altercation with two guys because they called him Usher. It was a little more into that though, but let's let's play the clip. The f- don't touch my boy. So, um, so, okay, so the full, the full story is that the two guys was like, hey, uh, hey, Usher, fuck you, or something like that, or fuck you, Usher, <laughs> and Jason Derulo just, like, started attacking him. Like, usually he's a calm, cool, collected person. You really don't hear much about him in the, um, in the media, but I thought that was freaking hilarious, like, mm-hmm. all I, all Usher, I could hear watching that was Jason Derulo. <laughs> <laughs> like, being called Usher is anything bad, but the yeah, fucking Usher's part goat. is, you know, but I'll, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. He probably was like, don't you disrespect Usher that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they did, the two gentlemen that he attacked did not, or have not, press charges. But you never know, you know, people, they may think about it and be like, you know, clout, clout they the ones started it, how they gonna yeah. press charges on him? Never well, missing opportunity. There's like a verbal attack. His is like, hey, bitch, words have, that from screen words cow, have always down. got your ass whooped. <laughs> well, I know I, I've been able to trigger people with my words. Yeah. I didn't say you couldn't trip, but I'm just saying words will get your ass whooped. If you and somebody face and they say the wrong thing, most likely... Somebody if it comes to physical you. violence, that means the tongue is powerful. But it's Hell yeah. it's literally like all the way up on that. What is it? The um, escalators? <laughs> when they said it, <laughs> 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 so it's like like he could have just yeah, just like yeah, they could have just yeah. But yeah, why do true. we always have to remove no, ourselves? <laughs> I gotta get involved. <laughs> I don't know, but hopefully, you know, if they do decide to press charges, or press charges, still, they started it. Uh, Don't be calling yeah. me fucking Usher. Right. I mean, hey, and it probably was, was fighting for Usher. And it yeah. probably was know. more so the disrespect of saying, hey, fuck you, yeah. you know, and not the Usher. But that's what people mm-hmm. ran with because it was so freaking hilarious. Um, hey, you, who wants to be Usher? <laughs> fuck you. Maybe that's what they were saying. <laughs> so, I mean, looking at, like, his hair, he is kind of favoring Usher right now. Usher is nice hair. looking. Yes, he is. And he's goat. You Like, he's a... He's breached legendary status as far as an R&B artist. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of R&B artists, the next verses should be Jodeci versus, uh, 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 I would say, like, Jagged Edge or something. No, Jagged Edge cannot No, Jagged Edge on 12. Yeah, that's better because Jagged uh, Edge cannot Jodeci, touch Jodeci. Jodeci and... Um, Jojo's no Jodeci Jojo's and, uh, daughter is on oh, love yes. hip hop acting a damn and fool. Lazy Bone is going to help her. Yeah, that was right. kind of strange. Yeah, but I don't know the back end because okay, so growing up hip hop, I saw the previews for like for it and Lazy Bone was on there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm outside like, my boy. Yeah, but I thought he was gonna I be on there lazy. for um, Little Easy. Uh huh. But when they showed the episode this Thursday, he said that he was there for Sequoia, who mm-hmm. is. Uh, Jojo's daughter. Jojo. Jojo. Yeah. yeah. Off of Casey. Uh, Jojo. 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 Yeah. yeah. But they didn't go into any more detail. But I was. That's what I was thinking. I was she like, acting a fool. She mad. She was going. She a off, rapper. Um, I think she's she, a singer. She she do something. But yeah, she does. She music. mad at Angela. 
over her ex-boyfriend that Angela don't even know. I guess he, they dated or whatever. But I thought and was... Angela don't even know. Mm-hmm. Wow. And she went off on JoJo's wife, who's so sweet. She is. I think her name is Janice or something. Or uh, Janice. Janice. Tuss. Okay. Tuss. Yeah. Tuss. Yep. Okay. <laughs> it's with a J. Tunnice. It's. I follow her on Instagram. It's 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 T A N I C E or T E N I C E. I thought it was that. with it. Maybe they be having JoJo in front. You know, I can't <laughs> see that good. But anyway, she's so sweet. But. I ain't liking nobody messing with no sense. Uh, Simmons, you know yeah. I love them. Yeah, well, I thought that was kind of odd. I was like, what? Maybe that they is, family. Uh, maybe their family. Yeah, she, they must be close his friends. Wife, his wife was four months pregnant. Yeah. I well, haven't watched any of the growing up TikToks. I'm really, sorry to really bring good. that in, but I love it. No, but that hey, show. I like hearing about it because I it's didn't know really any good. of that. Mm-hmm. I like that show. I do. Um. Okay, so. Our last topic of the evening. I'm surprised my money say I'm ready to run off snow. I am the uh, to go. Our last topic of the evening, because you look so fabulous, huh? No. <laughs> no. You look good every every day. Oh, uh, sweet. Thank you. So Antonio Brown at <laughs> at uh, last Sunday's football game, Antonio Brown walked off the field, took off his well, took off his jersey, threw it and walked off the field. He is no longer a part of the Buccaneers. Let's go ahead and play the clip. Once that happened, he went and got in the car and left. Um, he later released a statement saying that he had broken ligaments in his ankle that made him play while he was in pain, and they all knew about it, and he just couldn't take it anymore, and they were losing to the Jets. Um, but then, I guess, they also tried to throw in there, like, they didn't know. He came with receipts, and that he knew, or that they knew he had... A picture of the um, the physical therapist like working with his ankle, massaging him, and saying how he needs surgery, and they still made him play. Mm. If that's the truth, I don't blame him for walking off. I mean, like if the bro is really his ankle, he's really injured. Why was you forcing him to play? If anything, that would be negligence on them, and he could have sued, you know. But that's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> I bet you if he was this color, he wouldn't have had to play the color of this paper. And Tom Brady actually defended him. I don't care. Uh, My thing is, I think what he did was immature, though. Yeah, I what mean, he did was, was very immature. He could have handled that like instead of going out like you're pretending to play and like taking your stuff off in the middle of the game and throwing it in the audience mm-hmm. and acting like a childish person. He should have just not went out there at you all. Know, he should have just we walked be, away. We gotta, no, we I, <laughs> see, no, but see the, him doing it that way. Which granted, I I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. But with him and how he's going to be portrayed in the media and stuff like that. They're blaming, like, I, we had a person comment on on our, on our page yeah. calling him immature and blaming his parents for his behavior. That's what and, you just called him, immature? No, I said what he did was oh, immature, okay. but not blaming that on his parents. He is a grown-ass man. He made the decision to do so, that. So somebody blaming his parents? Don't yes, you know, and that, that he wasn't raised. Yeah, like that I don't agree with because I said like anything. I'm a grown ass woman. I'm almost forty years old. No, I got a couple years, but I'm almost forty years old. If I go outside and do something today, like if I say, you know what, mom, I'm gonna go out here and fucking slash some fucking tires on the street, mom and mom be like, like no, let's just say, let's go with you. No, let's say mom tells me no, Nisi, you shouldn't do that. I wouldn't. Say and, that. <laughs> but let's say you did tell me not to do I'm that, and if you. I do it anyway, that is not. I am a grown woman. I make my own decisions. There is nothing that I can do that can be blamed on you. You gave me the 
the tools and like, hey, Nisi, you can do this and you'll be good. You can do that and you might have a problem. It's up to me to do what I want to do. Stop blaming your parents for what you decide to do as an adult. I'm so sick of people mm-hmm. using their parents as an excuse for making horrible decisions in their life. There's no excuse for it. Once you get old enough, you know right from wrong. You cannot yeah. keep blaming your parents your whole life for shit you do. My own kids blame me for stuff they I don't do. blame so you I for don't shit. Care. I don't blame you My for boys shit. that don't like me blame me. Yeah, I don't blame for you how for they are. And I had nothing anymore. to do with him. At 17, he was gone. So he learned that stuff from somebody. Yeah, I'm a grown ass woman. Anything I decide to do is me. Mama would be me like, you flash it this way. That's more effective. <laughs> yeah. like, you go, you're going to show a me. Like, I, there have been times where I came home and mom, like, Mom, I fought somebody or Mom, I did this. And she like, Girl, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, sometimes we have to fight just to know. Because most people in this family, this family, are sweet, not nice. yeah, we are. I'm about the meanest one in the whole family <laughs> out of all my kids and all my grandkids. Okay, I'm just saying, if they think you nice nowadays, they try to bully yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So that's why you know. And then, I when that person left a comment on our page um, about Antonio Brown. We didn't even know the full story. Yeah. Like him saying he was injured. Yeah, and we didn't know that. Ligament. We just knew of the video of yeah. what happened at the game. Because yeah. it, it was right after the game and aired. Then, and then y'all, been, okay, so y'all know the show, the Chappelle show, how he's how he's just like, uh, what is it? I keeps it real. Yeah. yeah. He's he's keeping it he real. Said, yeah. I got kids out here. You know, that's. When keeping it real that's goes, goes how, That's Sometimes that's how we are. <laughs> Not saying it's right. It could have been handled better, but also. But that's the way he felt like doing it. It was his game. It's his <laughs> money. If that's the way he wanted to go out, I don't you know care what? if he went out childish. Wait I don't care how they feel. That was on him. He the one gonna have to deal with but it. But what it was is that he was supposed to get like a million dollars in, or like over a million in promotion you know uh, payment. But he had to do, he had a few other control obligations and that game was one of them. He was like, fuck it. I don't need the money ran out right. on the field. I don't blame him. Because you that. know what? They try to control you with that. I'll endorse you, give you this. Sometimes we don't give a damn about your endorsements. Yeah. And then that may really show that he was probably really in pain mm-hmm. if he's turning on that kind he of like, money. I'm leaving. Or something he, he else. Was was like he was in pain when he I'm was down. skipping down that field. Well, <laughs> or something else was going on. Like, Especially, I mean, I, I would think it probably had more to do than the yeah. injury because he looked at fine uh, skedaddling off of the field. But which foot was it? Like uh, <laughs> He was skipping on both of them. You see yeah. him running away. But also sometimes. Well, after they made him play the game or half the game, probably wasn't feeling no pain because he was but so I mad. But I get that after a while, like when you have like deep injuries, you could be good for a mm-hmm. while, but then over time it could get yeah. more and more painful. So I can understand that. But I still think the way he did it, he could have been way more mature about the way he hey, did it. Yeah. Sometimes you act mature. Sometimes but hey, he's a grown man. He can do whatever he want to do. You never know. You never know. Sometimes uh, a mistake works in your favor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, he may get a TV show. You know, just little he things. Might, yeah, he I'm never, sure he'll have more opportunities yeah, elsewhere. He might. He, yeah. Like you just, I'm sure he will. You just never know. He might end up with more opportunities from mm-hmm. doing that. Like, for instance, when people have sex tapes, you know, they end up Like the Kardashians, what got them started. Now, all them bitches is famous for nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, hell, that's the first sex tape I heard of. No, what about Pamela and Tommy? They were first. That was No, they were first. They were first. Pamela and Tommy, they got a Uh, new movie about that Ray J was first. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. He hit it first. I'm the one. I'm the one. I like Ray J. I like Ray J. Um, I don't have anything else to discuss. Do you, Ma? Hey, I didn't discuss enough. Yeah, we pretty much covered everything. I just one last point: Black women, please stop supporting these dudes. You see that platform? I, I, (laughs) girl, who am I supporting? Who am I? You be on that social media arguing with them. They wouldn't even get my argument. I'm trying to, I'm them. trying but to listen, plant seeds. Every Don't show, every show from now on, y'all. I'm trying to. I'm start. gonna give y'all a, Go ahead. a, a my shirt. Go ahead, mom. Oh, she feeling good. Yes, That's I feel right. good. Go Look, ahead, mom. Boots and Collins say, if you fake the funk, your nose will grow. <laughs> she feeling good, y'all. I am. Boots it. <laughs>
All right. Well, I want to say thank you because um, on our Facebook page and our Instagram page and thank YouTube, you. we have gained some followers. Like just like the past two weeks on Facebook, we gained like 20 followers. So I do want to thank y'all. Yeah, who thank, thank you guys, guys for supporting folks. us. Thank you. Watching these crazy, crazy ladies. Three crazy women. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all. Have a good night. Good night.